How's it going, guys? It's Rad. Welcome to the WWE SmackDown review from last night, the July 3rd ed edition, which actually happens to be the 4th of July edition. So yeah, happy 4th of July to everybody. Hope everyone has a great day. But anyway, continuing on to the show itself. So Raw, so SmackDown, sorry, SmackDown, there. Starts off with the Team Hell No reunion tour segment. So Kane and Daniel Bryan, Team Hell No, come out. Of course, then join the reunion tour after being separated for five years. Of course, Daniel Bryan's saying that Team Hell No is officially back and better than ever. We're going to have to see on that one. And they say when Hell No is united, they are unstoppable. Well, you had a six-month title reign, so that may be enough to prove that. Of course, Kane says Hell No is better than ever. And then Kane says Daniel's always had a demon over him. I'm pretty sure everyone has a demon over him, but of course no one is the demon king like Finn Bauer. Yep, and Kane of course says this a fresh short course Daniel telling Kane apologize for all the times in the last five years Kane tried to kill him and end his career. Of course Kane says they need to let all that go. And they need to unite their strengths in order to beat Will Carper and Luke and Car and Eric Rowan for the tag titles at Bat Extreme Rules. And then, of course, it ends in a yes-no battle with Daniel Bryan saying Kane never had his back. And Kane saying yes, he did. And in a yes-no battle. And then the Usos come out. Then the Usos first say that Team Hell No doesn't deserve a title shot. They then welcome them to the Uso Penitentiary. Man, that penitentiary is getting full. I'm not sure where would you put a 7-foot tall demon... You're going to have to put him in a special cell, the padded one. And, of course, they mocked the whole hugging thing because the Uso said Team Hell No only got a title shot because they hugged. They had a hug. So then the Usos do go and do four hugs for every tag team title reign they won. Um, Usos, you were incorrect there. It isn't four tag team title reigns you had. It's five. You missed a title reign in 2014. But don't worry, I got you covered. I cover you as good as State Farm. Cause like a good neighbor, Sea Rat is there. That so Daniel Bryan then challenges the Usos to a tag team match. And that's when SmackDown General Mage Manager Paige comes out. She of course makes the match official and to up the ante, Paige told the Usos if they can win the match. The SmackDown Tag Team Title Match and Extreme Rules will become... They will be added to the SmackDown Tag Team Titles Match Extreme Rules. And it will become a triple threat match. So yeah, I like that. Instead of Usos jobbing out to everybody. So next up we get the Jeff Hardy Independence Day US Open Challenge. Jeff Hardy, of course, the United States Champion. Challenging anyone in the locker room for a United States Championship match. Only fitting because it's the 4th of July. And that number, and it would be accepted by the Miz. So, highlights of the match. Jeff Jawbreaker was actually pretty on point. Miz's boot was well good. Jeff's atomic drop leg drop combo was also on point. Miz's DDT was also pretty good. Good. Miz's corner clothesline, of course, always great. Jeff's whisper in the wind was on point. Match ending, Jeff hits the twist of fate swanton bomb combo to get the three count on the Miz to retain the title. So sadly, that United States Championship will not be made relevant by the Miz. But don't worry, Miz. Someday, you'll make that U.S. title relevant and great again. Someday. But yes, anyway, continuing on. Next up, we get a segment that's so cringeworthy, it contends. It can contend with the Roman Reigns segment for a garbage moment of the week this week. So next up is the New Day 4th of July pancake eating contest. So they're trying to mock that hot dog eating contest they always have on the 4th of July. This segment was hosted by Byron Saxton. Honestly, fuck Byron Saxton. He's a shitty-ass commentator anyway. That's a, just a fucking cheerleader crybaby. Like, the whole point of being a commentator is to be neutral, not be a goddamn cheerleader. If you want to be a cheerleader, 
Go join the fans in the crowd. But anyway, all three members of New Day come out. And of course, all three members of the New Day were told they have five minutes to eat as many pancakes as they can. Of course, each one got a color code. One biggie got red pancakes. Xavier Woods got, I think it's white pancakes. And Kofi Kingston got blue pancakes. So as it's soon as the counter starts, 10 seconds in, Sanity's music hits. As Sanity then come out from the crowd and attack New Day from behind to end the segment. Big E, some hot notes of it. Big E gets thrown into the steps and over the announce table. And then Killian Dane would splash Kofi Kingston on the floor. Eric Young would push Xavier Woods, th would splash the splash Xavier Woods through a table. So, and Sanity standing tall. Of course, Eric Young looking good as always. My boy, Eric Young. All right, anyway, continuing on. Next up, we get another match. Now we're looking forward to this one. We have the Battle of the Sexes match. Asuka versus James Ellsworth. So, before the match even starts... Carmella would come out, of course, but gloat with the SmackDown Women's title saying she beat Asuka. Okay, we get it. We get it, Carmella. Not only did you beat Asuka, we also get that you vape. So before the match even starts, Ellsworth stalls by doing a warm-up. He would stretch his legs in the corner and then do a few push-ups. At this point, I'm saying, just fucking kick him in the head, Asuka. Get it over with. Of course, for this match, Carmella is also on get, as on his guest color commentator. So, highlights of the match. This was a quick match, but everything Asuka did was pretty much a highlight. Asuka shoved to Ellsworth to start the match was good. Putting Ellsworth right on his ass and out of the ring. Carmella, of course, telling him to get his ass back in the ring. When Asuka went for a headlock, Ellsworth would get out of the ring again, and Carmella would tell him to get his ass back in there. Asuka's kick to Ellsworth's fucking head was pretty good. Wish I can fuck, wish I could get in the ring and fucking do that to that son of a bitch. And Asuka's slap to Ellsworth's face was also good. When Els and the slap comes after Ellsworth takes off his shirt. Oh, Ellsworth took his shirt off. It's getting serious. And then after that, Ellsworth would run into the crowd with Asuka chasing him into the backstage area. Forcing a double count out. So this match is going to be a fucking draw regardless. Then Ellsworth would come back out through the crowd with Asuka chasing. Asuka would grab him and throw him over the barricade. And as Asuka went over the barricade, Carmella would attack Asuka from behind for a post-match assault. With both Asuka and Ellsworth standing tall. But as they were going backstage, Paige would find them. And Paige would tell Ellsworth... Due to Ellsworth's actions, Ellsworth will have to face Asuka again next week. But to up the ante, Paige said she was going to make all of Giant James Ellsworth's dreams come true. I'm like, what? I was like, you better not be giving him a title shot. And then she tells Ellsworth that the match next week between Asuka and Ellsworth will be a lumberjack match. And all the Lumberjacks will consist of every single per member of the SmackDown women's roster. So, names like Naomi, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Payne Royce, Billy Kay, etc., 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 you get the picture, are all going to be surrounding the ring next week. So, Ellsworth will have nowhere to run. So, yeah, anyway, continuing on, next up we get a one-on-one -on -one match. We get WWE Champion AJ Styles versus Aiden English. What of course, Rusev at ringside. So we get to once again celebrate the great holiday of Rusev Day. Of course, before the match, Rusev would go cut a promo along with AJ Styles. Of course, Rusev saying he's going to kick AJ out of his house. And he'll be moving into AJ's house on Rusev Day. Rusev Day is honestly the greatest gimmick in the world. The reigning, defending, undisputed gimmick champion of the world. I give you Rusev Day. Because it celebrates everything the New Day is and never will be. So anyway, to the match itself. Highlights in the match. Aiden English's German suplex slam, I want to call it. If it's not that, just, you know, you get the idea what the slam is. 
had my German suplex position and slammed him. That was actually pretty good on point. You know, AJ's clothesline was pretty diving clothesline was pretty good. AJ's forearm was on point. AJ's backbreaker was good. His calf Matt Jennings, AJ would walk in the calf crusher and get the submission victory. After the match, Rusev would pull AJ out of the ring and attack him for post-match assault. Rusev would then hit the Machka kick on AJ. Then Rusev throws AJ back in the ring and Rusev walks in the accolade. And ends up standing tall over him. Now, could that be the scene in two weeks? Or will AJ Styles what have the Rusev Day holiday come to a crashing halt? Either way, we all win. Because we like both these guys. Anyway, next up we get a women's match. Becky Lynch versus Payne Royce. Um, highlights of the match. Payne's big boot was pretty good. Payne's fireman's carry was pretty well executed. Becky's head toss was really uh, good. Showing an amateur wrestling background, I guess. Um, Becky's back exploder was pretty good. Match ending. Becky would walk into disarmor on Payne Royce and get the submission victory. Yeah, but then after that, we would also earn that at Extreme Rules, Jeff Hardy will defend the U.S. title against Shinsuke Nakamura. And yes, we also found out why Shinsuke Nakamura has been injured for a couple weeks. So AJ got injured after he was attacked by a police dog. Believe it was a German Shepherd. Those things are deadly. Because it was at a house show last week in California. They had the police dog searching the arena, of course, looking for any bombs or contraband and whatnot. You know, because you gotta watch out for all those terrorist activities. And I guess the dog did something it wasn't supposed to do and thought, I guess the dog thought H. Shinsuke Nakamura was a terrorist and attacked him. And of course, I think it was, I think it might be, I don't think it was exactly that recent, but maybe something close, something close to that. But it, but the police officers responded by saying it was the dog wasn't supposed to do that. No, the dog was not put down or euthanized, so the dog still gets to live. But I guess AJ will be good to go at Extreme Rules. I mean, he should like he took a dog, he took a tag from a police dog like a champ. Damn. But anyway, moving on. Next up is our main event. So we get Team Hell No versus the Uso. Team Hell No, Dan O'Brien and Kane versus the Usos. If the Usos win, the SmackDown Tag Team title match at Extreme Rules will become a triple threat. Highlights of the match. Daniels, two missile drop kicks. One from one from Kane throwing him in the what, to Uso. I think it was Jimmy Uso. Uh, it's, they, both Usos look the same. It's really hard to tell them apart. And Daniels' other missile drop kick was pretty good. Jay Uso's forearm was pretty well good. The double Uso suicide dive was also good. Daniel's running clothesline was on point. Daniel's avalanche hurricane rana to uh, I think it was Jimmy Uso from the second rope was pretty good. Well executed. Daniel's X kicks were on point. Jay's insecurity kick was on point. Jimmy's body slam in the corner was good. Jimmy's Rikishi, Rikishi splash was pretty on point. Of course... Uso's paying tribute to paying homage to their father Rikishi. Gotta do that. Jay's chop from the second rope was also good. Um, the crossbody collision between Jimmy and Jay Uso was also pretty well executed on point. Um, Kane splash in the corner was on point. The sidewalk slam was on point from Kane. Then we had the double super kicks from both Usos to Kane and. Dan to Kane and Daniel. Of course, on point match ending. Kane would intercept the Usos when they attempted a double Uso splash on him. Kane would throw Jimmy Uso in the path of Daniel Bryan's running knee. Kane would then hit the choke slam on Jay Uso to get the three count for the win. Of course, after the match, Daniel and Kane do the yes chance and then hug it out. Okay, the hug was funny the first. The hug was funny five years ago. Now it's starting to get old. And then the Bludgeon Brothers, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, come down and stare down Team Hell No from the stage. And that's where we end SmackDown. SmackDown, 
they had some highs. There were a couple segments there, like the New Day 4th of July pancaking contest and the Battle of the Sexes matches that were the lows in the night. Everything was pretty decent. Um, rating, I'll go 4 out of 10. 4 out of 10, it is the better show than Raw by that much. I give it that much of an edge over Raw. Like, Raw was a goddamn cringe fest. And a half. But yeah, SmackDown a better show this week by a little bit. But yeah, that's all I gotta say for the SmackDown review. Oh yeah, I'm doing a special unboxing video. It's not gonna be one, but two unboxings in one video sometime this week. So stay tuned for that. It'll be a WWE one and an NFL one. So yeah, stay tuned for that. But yeah, that's all I gotta say. Hope everyone has a great day and yeah, peace out.